Hello students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 7, Organic Chemistry. This is video number 14, and we're going to be looking at a range of different addition reactions involving the hydrocarbons. So this is the range of different reactions that we need to look at for unsaturated hydrocarbons. So we're looking specifically here at our alkenes and our alkynes, and their addition to a range of different chemicals which include but are not limited to hydrogen halogens, hydrohalogens and water. So we'll have a look at each uh, of these reactions in a little bit of detail. So the first one we want to have a look at is hydrogenation. Now, this is the addition of hydrogen across a double bond. So I guess the first thing we want to do is make sure that we understand what we're talking about when we talk about addition reactions. So if I take a simple unsaturated hydrocarbon like ethene, then what I have here is a concentration of electrons, a high density of electrons that are associated with that double bond four electrons in this space. Now these four electrons make this region quite reactive and therefore it, uh, we can readily add substances across that double bond, break that double bond and form a new substance. When we do that, we only form one product. So one of the ways of doing that is simply to add hydrogen. Now if we had hydrogen, then the hydrogen is going to add across where the double bond is. It'll break the double bond. So we have only a single bond. We have the original hydrogens that were part of the ethene molecule. But then we have two more hydrogens which have added across uh, that double bond. Generally speaking, a catalyst is used to help facilitate this process, usually something like platinum or palladium, and we can identify that by just putting it above the arrow in our reaction. So this gives us the structural formulae, and it's often easy to show these sorts of addition reactions with the structural formulae because you can show exactly where these substances are adding to. So this would be an example of an addition reaction. Note there's only one product. And this is going to be important for later. There's only one product. There are two reactants. And the two reactants have added together to form a single product. That hydrogen has added across the double bond and it has broken that double bond open. And so those two hydrogens have gone one to each of the carbons uh, on either side of the double bond. This is one example of an addition reaction involving the addition of hydrogen. A second addition reaction is called halogenation. As it sounds, and let's start again with our ethene. And this time we're going to add a halogen. So let's add chlorine. If we add chlorine gas to this particular uh, substance, then again the chlorine is going to add into that spot where the double bond is, and one chlorine atom is going to go either side of that bond. So, we'll come back to a single bond. Once again, we have a hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. But this time, we have chlorines adding across the top. So this time our product would be a 1,2-dichloroethane. A 1,2-dichloroethane. Where this time it's our halogen that's added across the double bond. Again, two reactants and just the one product. Now the same thing would happen if we added fluorine or bromine or iodine, all of which are diatomic molecules, and all of which will add across the double bond in order to produce a 1,2 dihalo, in this case, ethane. What about hydrohalogenation? 
This is the addition of a hydrogen halide across a double bond. So if we continue our sequence, this time, instead of adding hydrogen or a, hal a halogen, we're going to add one of each. Let's call it hydrogen bromide. In this case, the hydrogen bromide is going to add, as usual, across the double bond. And so we're going to have a single bond with our original hydrogens. But this time, one hydrogen and one bromine. So the product this time will become bromoethane. Because there's only one bromine, it has to be on the first carbon, and therefore we don't need the number. We just call it bromoethane. You can see this time, because it's a hydrogen halide, so we could also have added hydrogen chloride, hydrogen um, iodide, or hydrogen fluoride. And the same thing would have happened. We would have had an addition across the double bond with the hydrogen going onto one atom and the halogen going onto the other. Now this has been quite easy in a sense when we've had uh, equal numbers of hydrogens on either side. But there's a further complication that we can find when we have an unequal number of hydrogens on uh, the two carbons where the double bond is sitting between them. So here's an example uh, underneath. This would be propene. Propene. Okay, you don't need a number because it's got to be on the number one carbon. Now what would happen if, for example, I added hydrogen iodine, uh, hydrogen iodide to this? Now if I added hydrogen iodide to my propene, then I can have the hydrogen adding, if I just uh, switch the color over, so you can see, I can either have the double bond disappearing and a hydrogen coming here and an iodine coming here, or it could be the other way around, a iodine here and a hydrogen here. Now, in our previous examples, the molecules were the same. Whichever way I had drawn the, the two hydrogens, the two halogens, or even the hydrogen halide, wouldn't have mattered because there were the same number of hydrogens on each of the two original carbons. But in this case, there isn't. There are two hydrogens already here on the um, terminal carbon, but only one on that middle carbon. So then we need to add an extra little rule here. And that extra little rule is called Markovnikov's rule. And Markovnikov's rule is basically um, when you're adding atoms in, they will favor the side where there's already um, a higher number of them. So if I have hydrogen iodide being added in here, my most likely product is going to be carbon, carbon, carbon. Now, of course, I have my single bonds. Um, my hydrogens are already uh, are not going to change from where they were. So these are my original ones. But on the end carbon, I have two hydrogens. And on the central carbon, I have only one. So therefore, I'm going to put my iodine off the central carbon and my hydrogen off the end carbon. So when I name the product here, it would be 2-iodo-propane. Of course, now the double bond's gone, so it's now gone from being an alkene to an alkane, and the iodine has gone on to the uh, central carbon. Now, if it went on to an end carbon, we would simply call that 1-iodo-propane, but we just need to remember that Markovnikov's rule is going to tell us a little something about the preferred atom to which an addition reaction might occur. This is also an important rule to look at for some uh, later substitution reactions. And in fact, it's more common when we look at substitutions. But it's worth just flagging now, just so you know that where you've got a couple of isomers possible, often one of them is more likely than another. Our final addition reaction is hydration. And hydration is the addition of water. Again, let's go with the same molecule we've been looking at throughout this particular video, which is ethene. And this time we're going to add water, H2O. 
Now, if you think about water as HOH, it's probably easier to understand exactly what's going to be happening here. So when we add water to our ethene, what we have is, again, the double bond breaking, the hydrogens where they were before, but this time we get a hydrogen on one of the carbons and an OH group on the other. The hydroxyl group is now um, one of the species that is added across this double bond. Often for this kind of thing, uh, we might use a catalyst such as a dilute sulfuric acid, and that sometimes is shown by um, putting that across the top of the arrow. I'll just put dilute here so we're aware. And that water is going to be added across the double bond. So therefore, what I would have here is ethanol. Ethanol would be my product. Now, water can also be added across double bonds for other members of the alkenes in exactly the same way to create uh, a range of different alcohols. These are just a small sample of the types of addition reactions that occur across the double bond of our unsaturated hydrocarbons. And obviously, what I haven't looked at is what would happen if we had an alkyne instead of an alkene. And what you might find there is that instead of adding a single water molecule across a double bond, I could add two water molecules across a triple bond. There's a few additional consequences of that, and they're probably worth exploring in class. So I'll let you do that on another day. Thanks for watching.